Hi, my name's Paula Storm. Welcome to another Handy Quilter Sweet 16 Sunday. This week I wanted to show you how I um, based my quilts, usually um, a bit bigger than this, but this is how I based a quilt on my ironing board. Now to start with, I've got my batting laying on the ironing board and I'm just going to inspect it and find which direction the, um, the scrim is or which side um, it's been needle felted from. And I'm going to put that side facing down on the ironing board because when I um, when I sandwich my quilt I want the scrim to be closest to my quilt top so I'm going to put my um, backing on first so I want the scrim facing down now what I've done is I've just put the um, the batting on the ironing board and I've made sure it's about the middle and about centered on the ironing board so there's an equal amount of batting hanging down both sides and now I've taken my batting and I've folded it in half and I'm just making sure that it's covering um, all of the batting and I'm just laying it on there for now. Now I'm going to use um, a spray based so you can see here this is my quilt 101 basting spray that I, I prefer. Um, a lot of quilters use 505 but I personally prefer 101 and as you can see I didn't spray a huge amount of spray normally I would have done this outside but just for ease of video I've, I've just sprayed it inside but that's all you need you only need a tiny amount of spray um, and a lot of people don't use like using basting sprays because it gums up the needle but when you're only using a small amount like that um, it doesn't affect your needle at all Another thing I wanted to mention, uh, and as you can see now, I'm just folding the second half of the batting back over the other side, and I'm going to go and spray that that second side um, before I continue on. So I wanted to mention with the basting spray, as you can see, just a tiny amount is all you need, and I'm just making sure I'm covering the entire surface of the backing, the backing fabric. That's really important. On the instructions, um, it actually says to spray your batting, and I've found that if you do spray the batting that you need an awful lot more to make it stick and that's where you run into trouble with um, your needle gumming up and things like that. So I only use a tiny amount because I spray it on my backing fabrics and then later on I'll show you how I only spray a, a small amount on um, my quilt top as well. So what I'm doing now is I've finished spraying the, um, the backing fabric and I've just laid it and made sure that it's covering all of my batting and now I'm going to press it. The trick with, um, with the basting spray is to hit it with the heat of the iron and that will instantly set the glue and it'll hold it nice and securely on your backing fabric. It will also help um, to hold it in place for longer so you don't need to use pins or anything like that. So what I do is I start on one side and then because the ironing board um, is in that rounded shape at this end you can see I'm just going to hit it with the iron at the other end um, by pulling it back and that's the same process I use with a larger quilt so if I have a if I've done even a king size quilt on, a, on an ironing board not not much bigger than this so you can do really big quilts just by pulling it from one side to the other as you can see I'm just smoothing out all those wrinkles now um, and if you need to you can kind of separate the layers and smooth it all out and then I'll hit it with the iron again and as I said that just sets the glue and it will hold it nice and firmly in place. So as we get closer to the end now, um, as you can see there is quite a few wrinkles so it does require a bit of smoothing out but um, because I've used such a small amount of spray it's quite easy to separate all those layers so I'll just um, separate the layers, smooth it all out and then once again hit it with the iron. If you're working with um, quite a big quilt what I would do is start still start in the center but I'd start on one side of the quilt and I'd work on that side and do the whole ironing and, um, and the smoothing out and ironing process on that one side before I work on the second side and I find that that just makes it um, a bit easier for a big full size um, or king size quilt. For anything smaller than that um, th this process is really quite easy. The only difference I, I do, a different thing I do with a king size quilt is I might use my dining table instead of the ironing board and I just find that that um, you would want to check your ironing board though. If you're going to hit it with an iron, you do want to be careful with your ironing board uh, or with your table that you don't want to affect the um, the table. But um, I have 
done quite a few of my quilts on a kitchen bench even a melamine bench um, because my iron that's what, one thing I wanted to mention I'm not using a super hot iron I'm actually setting the iron for the temperature of my batting so in this case I've used a wool blend cotton blend polyester batting it's a Matilda's own batting it's one of my um, favorite battings that I like to use in my quilts so that's a wool cotton polyester blend so I've set my iron on a polyester setting and I find that that um, is plenty to set that glue so just depending on whatever batting you're using if you're using a wool um, batting for example you would want to set it to the wool setting um, and so you just want to make sure that that temperature if you're working on a dining table or a, a kitchen bench or something like that just check that the um, the heat's not going to affect your um, your table surface so I just check it in an area um, of the table that's not going to be affected so as you can see I've gone back to the center and I've worked from the center to the other direction um, on this quilt and I'm just finishing off this edge so you would want to repeat this process with your quilt top but I will show you that in a moment so again I'm just ironing it until it's all nice and smooth um, and then sliding it along and I would do the same process with um, with larger quilts as well Okay, so once I'm finished um, pressing the backing fabric to the batting, I'm just going to flip it over and you can see it's really nice and smooth and they're stuck together quite securely. Um, and I'm, again, I'm just going to centre that quilt back onto the ironing board. So I want an equal amount of batting and backing fabric hanging down both sides of the ironing board. And then I'm going to grab my quilt top and I'm just going to fold it in half um, and lay it on top of the uh, the back batting um, in the exact same way as I did the um, the backing fabric so I've folded it in uh, in half with the right sides together and um, am centering it on that batting when I'm layering that um, the quilt top onto my batting I'm just going to make sure that it's centered and that it's going to um, cover the whole of the batting um, and backing fabric because I don't want to go through this process and then find out it hasn't lined up properly so I'm just going to take the time now to make sure that the um, the quilt is actually fitting on my backing fabric and batting once that's done I'm just going to fold my quilt top in half again so that I, I again I can um, I can spray baste it if you need to you can take this outside um, and spray um, outside or in the past I've also what I've done is I've pegged my um, my quilt top onto a clothesline and just sprayed it outside so you can definitely do this by yourself you don't need somebody to help you um, to do this because <laughs> let's face it sometimes hubbies just don't want to hold a quilt for you <laughs> Another thing I wanted to mention about the spray base is you really need to shake the can up really, really well. Um, I've been known to shake a can for up to five minutes because it just really does need a good shake. You can tell when it's been shaken up enough because when you first start shaking, there's a ball bearing in the, um, in the can and it'll sound like it's sort of just swirling around the outside of the can. And when it's fully shaken up, it will... Um, the ball bearing will just be nice and even in the middle. It's really hard to explain um, by just talking about it, but you'll be able to hear the difference um, when you shake the can. When you first start, you'll tell that ball bearing's just going around, and by the time it's fully shaken up, you'll hear the difference. So make sure you give your can a really good spray, uh, sorry, a really good shake before you start. So I'm just treating this quilt top exactly the same way as I did with the backing. I'm spraying one side, then flipping it back over and spraying the other. And then again, I'm just going to smooth it out and um, press it into position. What I really love about um, basting a quilt this way is I can see where my um, seam allowances are and make sure they're in the right direction. So you can see that lump there, that shadow. That's basically a seam allowance has flipped over the wrong way and it's, um, it's laying in the wrong direction. So I could see that and I can hit it with the iron. I can first of all separate the layers and get the seam allowance going in the right direction. And then I can smooth it out and hit it with the iron. And I know that when I go to ditch stitch my quilt that I'm not gonna run into trouble with my seam allowances laying the wrong way. So that's one great reason to try this technique. 
So I'll just continue um, sliding it along and smoothing it out. As I get to the end, you can see that there's quite a few wrinkles there. So I can just lift those up, separate the layers and smooth it all out. And, um, and then what I like to do is to make sure that my corners are really square. I want a square quilt. And you can make sure your quilt's going to be square right now um, as you're basting it. So what I do is take a big square ruler, um, that's a 12 and a half inch ruler, and I'll just lay it on the corner of my quilt and I'll just sort of manipulate the, the top layer with my fingernails and I just slide them around and I manipulate that top, the quilt top until it's, um, until it's square. And then once again just hit it with the iron and I'll do that to every single corner of a quilt and sometimes if I've got a really big border and it's a bit wavy I'll get a long ruler as well and I'll try and make sure that it's nice and square. At this stage I'm also checking to make sure that my quilt um, is covering my backing fabric. There's nothing worse than finishing basting a quilt and finding out that there's um, there's not enough fabric around the outsides. So again then I was just separating the layers to make sure that that border is nice and straight and square. Once I've finished squaring up the first side I'll slide the quilt um, back to the middle and I'll just repeat that process again smoothing out getting out all those wrinkles and um, smoothing out the quilt and pressing it all into position. When I get to the other end, um, once again my big square ruler comes out again and I just check that the quilt's going to be square. I use my fingers, as I said before, my fingers and my fingernails and I just sort of run them along the quilt top and push them into position um, to make sure that they're square. You'll be able to see in this angle, um, that's quite a bit off, it's about a half an inch off. So as you can see I'm just running my fingernails along um, to square it up. That's almost there. and. Um, and now I'll just hit it with the iron to set it into place. I like to give myself at least a couple of inches all the way around just to make sure um, that I've got plenty of room. So once I've finished with that process I'll head over to the Sweet 16 and this is where I like to use the basting feature on my Sweet 16 to um, really make sure that those layers are going to stay together. I'll do this especially for a big quilt. Um, if it's a really big quilt like a king size quilt I want to make sure that those layers aren't going to move and I'm not going to end up with wrinkles on my backing. So I will take my, um, my quilt over to my Sweet 16 and just baste a few lines of stitching through the centre of the quilt. I thought I'd speed this up for you so you can see the whole process of me um, basting a quilt. Um, so as I said this is about a lap size quilt so it's not a huge quilt but I've been able to do this whole quilt in under an hour. In fact it only took me about 40 minutes to do the whole thing including filming um, the video so that's setting up cameras and making sure everything's on camera. Um, so this process is really really easy. With the basting, I've found that you actually, if you actually um, snip your threads at the end of each row, I find that easier. Um, because you're taking such big basting stitches, it, um, it can tend to gather up on you a little bit. So by snipping those threads, um, I find that easier. So as usual, I've worked from the centre out to the right hand side and then I flipped the whole quilt around and I started back towards the middle and worked out towards, um, towards the other side. So I prefer to do this just to make sure everything stays nice and flat. It's like when you're sewing two strips together. If there are really long strips, you'll tend to... Um, the, the feed dogs and things they tend to pull everything off centre and the Sweet 16 doesn't have feed dogs so it's probably not as likely to happen um, with the Sweet 16 but I just want to give my quilt every chance that it can get um, and make sure it's nice and square so that's just how I prefer to do it. So that's it for another HQ Sweet 16 Sunday. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, next week I'll be back with some really exciting videos. I'm excited for these, um, these next ones. I've got some brand new rulers that I want to try out. Um, so I hope you come back next Sunday for the Handy Quilter Sweet 16 Sunday program. I'm Paula Storm and please remember to subscribe to my channel um, if you find my videos handy. Thanks.